Hello, Chip GT here, and this is the final video for putting on the artwork. We're going to actually put it on the cabinet. In the last video, we put it on the back box. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and coin in and push that start button. Prior to installing the artwork, I needed to strip the cabinet down from all the parts that go through or are connected to the outside of the cabinet. We did the back box in the last video, so that was already off. This left the lockdown bar, the side rails, the glass tray, the buttons, the plunger, the coin door, and the legs. To make things just a little bit easier, I went ahead and removed the Playfield TV so that it didn't get too dirty. Rather than bore you with eight days of wood filling and sanding, here's a 30 second overview of all the things that I had to do. The last four days has been nothing but sanding and applying wood filler to fix every single little mistake. So this is nice and smooth now. I fixed that mistake a while ago. Went in there, so I filled all the brad gun holes, tapped, some of them needed to be tapped in. The first time I put my legs on, I put them on too low. So this morning, I was like, crap, I need to fill those holes. So I filled those. Um, so we're gonna go through a whole nother round of sanding and checking and everything else. Now, it's taken so much time to fill in. There's a huge divot here in the wood I had to fill. Huge divot here on this side too. There was a little dent there from the kids. I even did the back a little bit, smoothing it out. Once you've got everything smooth and the way you like it, you really need to think about future proofing before you put the artwork on. Putting on the artwork is the very last step for your cabinet. You need to have all the holes that you want in there because it's incredibly difficult to try to add a new hole with artwork already installed. So I decided to do a little bit of future proofing. Here's what I did. I had three buttons on the front here that were really teeny tiny. And I think I'm gonna expand these out to be full-size buttons because each one, I, I've come up with other ideas for the two middle buttons. So I think I'm gonna expand those, make them full-size. I recut these channels. I cut a channel on the bottom, on the front bottom, and on the bottom on the other side to lock in artwork. That's more for when I go to transport. Most pinball companies don't actually put T-molding down there, but I figured I wanted a nice edge that I could hold on to without worrying about hurting my hands um, or to make it easier sliding in and out of the car. Having that plastic team molding there will help with that. Okay, it's now day five of sanding, fine putty. You know, I ended up drilling out these three holes, making them bigger for three more bigger buttons. I think we're finally ready for some paint. And the reason why I'm really taking my time on this is because I only have enough paint for probably one coat, which is gonna be perfect because all I really wanna do is fill in the pores on the wood because the artwork is gonna go completely around it. It's gonna lock in up here, it's gonna lock in down here. The sides will be open, the back will be open. Without any further delay, let's go ahead and paint. And this is just the regular flat black paint. Okay, so the length should go on nice and smooth. The goal behind painting this is to fill in all the pores that are in the wood. After that, we got to sand it down and try to get a glass-like surface for the artwork to stick to. The reason for this is because the artwork is going to pick up any defect that the wood has, and we want to hide as much of it as we can. Okay, it is now day eight. It's taken a, a little bit longer for the paint to dry this time around. It's been really humid, it rained a little bit. So it took a little bit longer for the paint to dry to the point where we could sand it. Our noodles came into town, so he's here helping me out. And uh, this morning we started working and I forgot to get the camera rolling. So we did a sanding montage. This is now silky smooth. We are finally at the point where I believe we are ready to stick on some artwork. So, that's next. 
Okay, so I'm gonna start with the sides first. We're gonna put the artwork on the right side and the left side, and then we'll do the artwork on the front. There's gonna be a little bit of an overlap around this corner. I rounded my corners. I don't recommend you do that. Keep them nice and crisp. That way you have a line to cut down. So I'm gonna actually take the artwork on the sides, wrap it around the corner a little bit, and then when I put the front on, we're gonna wrap it around the corner and then cut it nice and clean and it should be a nice fit. But first, let's get the artwork. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll line up this artwork real quick. Go ahead and trim down some of the white on here just to kind of see how this is gonna fit. Be right back. I'm gonna go grab a helper. The critical line is the bottom. Go ahead and line up your bottom. us some wiggle room on the top here it'll be easier to apply there's a little bit of artwork that's on the upper side of the cabinet and it's it's almost too much so i need to trim this down really all we need is about a half an inch of overlap to go around the side so that it can get locked in so this doesn't have to be exact but i'm just laying the pin down and letting it do its job Okay, I'm gonna go on the outside. I'm gonna be a little more um, lenient with these lines because these were just kind of sketches. So I'm gonna actually come on the other side of the line and start making the cuts across the artwork. The reason I'm cutting on the other side of the line is so that the artwork will go around the edge of the upper part of the cabinet and actually get locked in this all makes sense in just a few minutes. just like what we did. I'm going to start on the, this side and we're just going to kind of pull this down a little bit like that. And I'm going to line up my corner. You line up, go ahead, you line up your corner first. Or I'll line up my corner here. And I'm just, you got yours lined up? Mm -hmm. I'm just going over a little bit. I'm not pulling too hard. I'm just going to lightly tap down this line a little bit. You don't want to tack it down all the way because if we make a mistake, we want to be able to peel it back off. So I'm just kind of lightly tapping this down. And then double check your side. Go ahead and hold it. Hold it. Okay. I'm going to start from the middle. I'm just kind of lightly squeegee. Like that. Now I'm going to push from the middle.
after seating it down, I used my hand to round across the forward edge. Remember, I rounded mine. You, if you kept yours square, shouldn't have to worry about rounding it around the side. But in order to make it look professional, I wrapped it around the front side by hand. And then using an X-Acto knife, I cut several leaf cups on the top and the bottom and folded the vinyl down in place. I used a large flathead screwdriver to kind of push the artwork down into the groove. That way when I put the glass tray into the wood, it locks the artwork down. I then repeated the whole process for the other side of the cabinet. And as you can tell, it turned out looking really nice. The front panel can be a little tricky, especially when you go to line it up on the two sides like I did for rounding the edges, but I lined it up perfectly and I lined up the with the little bit of the white going over the top. There was plenty on the bottom to fold over on the other on the bottom side. When applying this on, I you really got to take your time with the front panel because you have this big gaping hole in the middle of the artwork where the coin door goes. I had to get the artwork to go over about halfway. I had to pull it off, reseat it a few times just to get it right. Don't push too hard with your squeegee down on this to lock it in place because you're probably going to have to pull it up a couple of times. I went around the cabinet a few more times, making sure that there are no bubbles in any of the artwork. And then using tea molding and a rubber mallet, I locked in the artwork on the bottom side of the cabinet on all three edges. You may have noticed that on the top part of the artwork on both of the sides, there's a little bit of white there towards the front. I'm not worried about that because I have the chrome side railing it comes down about an inch and it'll cover up uh, that imperfection of the artwork same thing on the front edge the lockdown bar will help cover some of that so I'm not really worried about that With the artwork locked down, it makes it easier to cut out your holes using a brand new blade on an X-Acto knife. Uh, as you can see on the side here, I did the, uh, the right flipper and the nudge, but uh, I probably should have waited until it was locked down because locking it in stretches it just a tiny little bit. All right, now that we have some more work, we need to go out of our way to protect it uh, if you've got some legs that are metal, I highly recommend you get these plastic protectors. It'll protect the artwork over time. They go in between the cabinet and the leg, and they are pretty inexpensive on uh, Pinball Life. You can find these fairly cheap, and they come in a, a whole bunch of different colors. I just got black because I like the color black. So I'll go ahead and we'll start attaching the legs back on. So, protector, leg, bolt, bolt. All right, for a virtual pinball machine, you don't really need to worry about leveling unless it's an issue with your accelerometer and detecting your nudging and your shaking of the table. So, what I do is first, I get the main bolt halfway. So what you can do is you'll take this all the way out so for these levelers, it's about 70 millimeters, and that's about 35 is the halfway point. So using a Sharpie, 
I'll uh, move this nut out of the way and measure to right about 35. And I try to color that thread in a little bit just to make it dark so I know. So there's my mark. Oops. This is just a starting reference point. Yeah, let's see if I can't stop shaking. There's my mark. Right there. Okay. And then you take the nut and you take it up. So this way, if you need to go up, you can go up. If you need to go down, you can go down. This is what I call the starting point. All right, we're back inside now and I attached the side rail here. It's one bolt here and one bolt down here. Same thing for the other side. You have to attach the side rails before you can attach the back box. All right, so we got those on the um, lockdown bar goes on nice and smooth just like that and stays in place I'm gonna wipe down the lockdown bar I'm gonna wipe down all the chrome when we're all put back together again and we'll get some good shots of that but now we're ready to do the coin door and the back box when you go to put the back box back on the metal parts that stick down, there's a risk that you could nick your artwork. So I ended up having my wife help me uh, get this back up into place and get the alignment bolt in. And um, that's why I had those felt pads on those washers. It really helps protect this artwork. So with that said, we have now completed the how to install artwork on your pinball machine series. I hope everybody enjoyed watching this. If you did, please give it a like, please subscribe. It really does help the channel grow and share this with your friends. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about where we're gonna go this summer with our summer series. I'm really looking forward to it. I'll see you in the next one.